To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Right, my dear children. So, this is a brief discussion, right? A brief explanation about the second part then. So, previously we have identified what are the questions or what are the things included in the first paper. Now, in the first paper, you know that already. First paper is already regarding with the MCQ questions. There were 40 MCQ questions. Now, this is our second paper, my dear children. So, now I'm going to explain, right, what are the contents in the second paper and how these contents have been created with, like in what kind of areas are there and how we receive marks over here okay so this is the structure of the second paper my dear children uh, so as like in the previous the second paper or the science paper the symbol for the science uh, number for the science paper is given here 34e2 so this is the second paper so the time for the second paper the entire time for the for part a and part b would be three hours then uh, this is the part A, my dear children. So here there are two sections, right? Two parts related to the uh, second part of the uh, O level paper, O level science paper. So in here, answer the four questions in part A in a spray in the space provided. So within the space which is provided over here, you have to answer the questions my dear children so there are four questions in part a so this is part a there are four questions so when you take the part a my dear children the four questions have been created with one with physics one with chemistry and one with biology then the fourth question the fourth question is entirely reflecting about the environmental equilibrium then about the um, environmental pollution then you know the stuff that we learned in our biosphere lesson in grade 11, the 15th lesson. Ah, so all of those things are related to that lesson part. Okay. And some kind of things related to your general knowledge. Right. So those are the things which have uh, which are being asked within the first question uh, of the second paper. Right. Second paper or part A in the second paper. Okay, so there are four questions in the uh, part A of second paper. First question is related to that environmental equilibrium and the balance about the biosphere. Then second, most probably from biology. Now in here, my dear children, you can clearly observe. The second question is totally related to the biological lesson parts. So there is a cell, right? Then uh, there's an experiment related to the photosynthesis. Then this is the first question, like I said, re reflecting about the carbon cycle and about the energy sources which used, right? Then after that, my dear children, the third question. Third question is reflecting about the, uh, you know, structure of atoms. Then uh, there are certain elements which is given in here. Then about uh, the electronegativity then uh, ionization energy, then uh, the first part is going to reflect about the chemical bonds, the nature of chemical bonds. So you can observe dot and cross structures over here. So like that way, the third question is reflecting about the chemistry lesson parts. Then after that, my dear children, the fourth and the final question, fourth and the final question is completely related to the physics lesson parts. So here, the equilibrium of forces regarding tensions and weights is given then about the uh, potential energy kinetic energy and about the uh, you know uh, uh, frictional force right those things are given in the fourth question my dear children right so these this is the way of creating the questions in the first part part a of the second paper there are four questions all of these four questions must be answered within the paper itself and for each question you will be getting 15 marks so 15 by 4, you'll be getting 60 marks from the entire paper for the part A in second paper, my dear children. Okay. So this is the brief discussion about the second paper. Then after that, my dear children, we'll be looking at the second part related to the second paper. So part B. In part B, my dear children, 
there are five questions then you have to answer only three five questions five six seven eight and nine so these are the five essay type questions so there are five essay type questions in the second part part b so within this part b my dear children right you have to select only three only three any three that would uh, that you would like okay if you have the ability to answer any three questions then select those questions and answer uh, that's how the essay type questions have been created right so when answering the essay type questions now let's see what is the structure i mean like what are the areas the theoretical areas that we can identify these uh, questions so when you take the first question first question is completely related to the systems right so there are systems in the organism in an organism so those systems are being asked questions related to those parts so you know that it's a biology lesson part related to grade 10 and 11 biology so the first question is related to the biology parts especially systems animal biology then next one the sixth question asking about the hydrocarbons then uh, complete equations then about the energy level diagrams right like this then uh, there's another part gas production so sixth question is totally related with the chemistry lesson parts that we have learned in grade 10 and 11 then this question number seven seventh question by just looking at it you can observe optics is there right optics means the light the pathway of the movement of light rays through a uh, lens through lenses through mirrors and so on so optics lesson completely related to the physics part then okay so seventh question is totally made up with physics part then uh, there is energy related to the electrical equipments right so seventh question physics then after that my dear children the eight in eighth question you can observe half biology then half physics so here one half is created with the reproduction and uh, the uh, process or the uh, plant reproduction and then plant then classification of plants those things are being asked then uh, in the second half of the question there is current electricity about the voltage and about the ampere and so amperes and so on that means the current and those things are being asked in the second part so this is biology and physics in the question number eight then in the final question the ninth question this is related with the physics that means you can see you can really see this is related with the hydrostatic pressure and about the uh, and about the uh, you know archimedes principle right about the floating process of a certain equipment so related to the physics part then in here my dear children you can observe there are several questions given regarding with the Salton. So it's related to the chemistry lessons in the grade 10 and 11. So the questions have been created one with chemistry, one with physics, one with biology, then biology physics and biology and well, chemistry and physics. This is how the five questions have been arranged. So you have to answer only three questions in the second part of the second paper. This is part B then. So this is how we answer the questions, my dear children. Now for the first part, part A will be receiving 15 times for 60 marks. For the second paper, part B in second paper, you'll be receiving 60 marks once again, 20 times three, right? So for one essay type question, you'll be receiving 20 marks. So 60 plus 60, for the entire second paper, you'll be getting 120 marks. Then we divide it by two to make it into 60, right? Then from the first part, you'll be getting 40 marks, okay? So altogether it becomes 100. That's how the paper becomes out of 100. So you'll be getting 200 marks actually. So however, we just need to divide this one only by two, right? You divide this one only by two, the total marks out of 120, divide it by two, turn it into 60, then add with the first part to get the entire marks. So this is how the structure has been created in the all level science paper. So remember for this paper, you will be receiving three hours of time. So it's important to manage your time 
and answer the paper within that time period. So all together, there are seven questions that you need to answer, right? There are seven questions that you need to answer out of the nine questions given in second paper, okay? Right, my dear children. So this is the structure of the paper. So I hope that you got a good knowledge about the structure, right? So like I said, there are nine questions, right? There are nine questions, four questions in the part A, and again, five questions in part B. Out of these nine questions, you have to answer seven questions, all four questions in part A and selected three questions in part B, right? So this is how we answer the questions, right, my dear children. Now it's time to discuss the paper then, right? So let's head on to see the first and foremost part in the 2022nd question paper. First and foremost part related to the second paper is part A of the second paper, which is the structured essay part. Now let's head on to discuss the structured essay questions related to the O-level science paper then, right? Right, my dear children. Now we are about to answer the first part in your 2022nd O-level paper. Now this is the structured paper, my dear children. So this is the uh, part A of the second paper. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, within the second part, right, there are two structures separately. One is the structured part, which is named as part A, and there is another part, part B, essay type questions. Within the structured part, there are four questions separately. You need to answer all the four questions within the paper itself. So you have to manage the space given within the paper, then you have to answer the questions which has been asked, okay? So the first and foremost question, usually we are getting from the biosphere lesson in your grade 11, right, science, okay? So uh, you know that uh, biosphere lesson is usually related with the environment balance and the equilibrium. So uh, these things are regarding with the, um, you know, uh, atmospheric, uh, air and about the uh, cycles like water cycle, atmospheric, uh, atmospheric air cycles like carbon dioxide and nitrogen and so on. Then about the, uh, you know, uh, the fossilization, right? Then about respiration, then about um, combustion and, um, you know, uh, releasing of different kinds of greenhouse gases. Then after that, my dear children, uh, you know, when you take uh, the environment pollution methods, so all of those things will be discussed within here. Usually uh, when you take the questions which is which has been given here within the question one, most of the times you can answer these questions by your general knowledge, right? If you have a good understanding about the environment, about the environmental pollution, then about the greenhouse effect, greenhouse gases, change of climate patterns and so on, right? So then my dear children, you can answer these questions without any doubt, okay? However, there are some theoretical parts also which has been included within the question, right? Definitely they will include theoretical questions as well, right? But however, most probably, right, most of the questions which has been asked, right, you can answer just by using your general knowledge, okay? So it's quite important to develop up your general knowledge regarding the envir environmental equilibrium and about the uh, balance in the environment, right? So here, it is very important to know about environmental pollution, my dear children, and how to safeguard our environment, okay? So all the questions are based on those, kind of, those kinds of stuff within the first question related to the part A, okay, structured part. So as I have mentioned, my dear children, now here, within the first question, you are given with a certain table, certain graph related to different kinds of energy sources, then uh, there's a certain cycle given in here, right? So you have to answer all of these questions and you can clearly see that the markings have been given within the paper itself without any trouble, okay? So now my dear children, what we are going to do is we are going to answer the questions one by one each, right? Then uh, we'll discuss We'll discuss some uh, theoretical parts as well as the solutions for the questions given. Okay, right then. Now let's head on to see the first question then. So 
The following graph indicate how a developing country utilized various sources of energy for generating electricity. Now to generate electricity, right, there are different kinds of energy sources have been used by this particular country. Okay, so there is petroleum, potential energy of water, that means flowing water in simple, then coal, solar energy and wind. So there are several energy sources you know that these uh, some of these energies are energy sources are renewable and some are not renewable non-renewable renewable means we uh, you know that those things are never getting destroyed for long time period i mean like no, it's not never getting destroyed but we can use it for a very long time period okay so examples are potential energy of water solar energy and wind you know that until the uh, sun is going to last all of these things are going to uh, be in our at, uh, be in our planet earth my dear children so therefore we assume that these things are renewable energy that means they are never going to end that means uh, they last for a long time period actually right okay so when you take petroleum and coal those things are non-renewable energy sources because after some kind of a time period they're going to be uh, totally vanished from our planet earth it's because of the use right now you know that when you take petroleum and coal in simple fossil fuel fossil fuel is a limited resource in our planet earth scientists have mentioned that within near 100 years of time definitely this fossil fuel will be completely uh, vanished from our planet earth it's because of the overuse so you know that fossilization is the reason for creating these fossil fuel my dear children fossilization is going to take like uh, millions of years right to create like these kinds of fossil fuels so therefore uh, we won't be able to get fossil fuel after this amount of fossil fuel is going to be destroyed or being used by the people so after that we have to wait for a long time period like millions of years in order to obtain new fossil fuel from natural process okay so therefore my dear children this uh, petroleum and coal are considered to be as non-renewable energy sources okay now let's head on to see the questions so all of the questions in first question part a related with this graph let's see what are the questions then based on the information given in the graph fill in the blanks in the following table okay so you need to uh, fill the blanks in the table given here let's see the year in which the potential energy of water has been utilized at the highest percentage so potential energy of water can be identified over here right this broken line this dotted line shows the potential energy of water so it's like comes like this goes like this and comes like this and goes like this comes like this once again so as you can see when you're looking at the pattern you can observe the highest possible peak can be observed within here so this reflex like up to here which is in 2013 my dear children right so you can directly write down the answer so i'll erase that part so it's 2013 my dear children 2013 right the renewable energy source utilized least least used energy source according to the table you can see wind which is the lowest one okay so we can write the answer wind wind next one the energy source of which the utilization has increased rapidly during the time range given increased rapidly that means it should climb up let's see rapidly getting increased this is the one right you can clearly observe it has risen up like heavily starting from 2010 to 2020 it has a gradual climb up so therefore our answer should be my dear children coal all the others when you observe all the others all the others are showing you know some kind of a deceleration i mean like uh, the usage is getting decreased somewhat see here it has been climbed up somewhat but getting reduced at the end okay then in here also it's getting somewhat reduced 
then these things are being increased, but those things are not being rapidly increased, right? There is a certain increase, but however, it's not rapid. So therefore, our answer should be call my dear children. Call is the answer for next one then. Call, right? The energy source which uh, which uh, which the uh, utilization has increased rapidly during the time period. Then next one, the utilization of petroleum in the year 2018 as a percentage. 2018 petroleum as a percentage. So we'll go like this. Petroleum is in here. This is the point. So it's like 30%. 30% right percentage is like 30 here you can clearly observe in 2019 it's like 30% right petroleum usage so we have answered the four questions related to the first question then right let's see the fifth one then according to the above graph what is the relationship that can be seen in the variation between the utilization of petroleum and utilization of potential energy of water to generate electricity so they are asking about the relationship between the variation of utilization of petroleum and the utilization of potential energy in water right so let's see when you take potential energy of water it has been gradually decreased but petroleum it has been gradually increased my dear children so when one thing is getting increased while the other decreases that kind of a relationship is referred to as inversely relation inverse relationship right so these two are inversely related to each other so we can write the answer without any trouble what is that these are inversely related to each other inverse relationship my, means my dear children when one quantity increase the other is going to decrease and vice versa that means it's the opposite if the other is going to decrease one, the uh, uh, the next one is going to increase like that way so the potential energy in water keep getting decreasing while the petroleum usage is getting increased with the time so which means these two are showing right inversely relation inverse rela inversely uh, related one right the proportion is inversely related okay so therefore we can write the answer these factors are inversely related to each other so this is the answer for question number five then so let's head on to see the sixth question in the future which energy energy source indicated here should be paid greater attention for generating electricity in toroid uh, zone country like sri lanka so toroid zone country that means uh, receiving much amount of sunlight like a right area so we can simply say that a tropical country okay so if a tropical country is receiving much amount of sunlight throughout the year we can focus on the solar energy or else sun so the question is asking about which energy source so here we can clearly uh, write down the answer sun or else solar energy both the things are correct huh? sun as they have answer, uh, as they are asking about the energy source source means a thing that we receive energy from so therefore i'll mention that sun sun is the most probable answer my dear children because asking about the soul energy source okay sun next one name a source of energy which is not indicated in this graph but it is used in some developed countries to generate electricity okay name a source of energy which is not included in this graph but is used in some developed countries to generate electricity so you have to mention some kind of energy source which is not mentioned in here but which has been used in developed countries so there are several my dear children sea waves tidal waves 
nuclear energy, atomic power and so on. So you have been on, write down, you have been asked to write down only one. So we can write the answer nuclear energy. Right? Nuclear energy. Right, my dear children. Now let's head on to see the second question related to the first question. That means part B. So a certain cycle is given here. This is regarding about atmospheric carbon dioxide. So atmospheric carbon uh, carbon dioxide means my dear children. You can here again observe the decomposition and the fossilization process. Then the factories which are used in these de uh, decomposed and fossilization materials. Then through the combustion, atmospheric carbon dioxide is getting collected. Then there is a certain uh, you know uh, process named as process P, which is being uh, which is being uh, done by the plants, right? So this is more like related to the carbon cycle. Actually, it is the carbon cycle, my dear children. So you can clearly identify the atmospheric carbon dioxide and also through the fossilization process. We know that the carbon is the one which is getting circulated in our biosphere. So let's see the questions then. What is the bio, uh, biogeochemical cycle illustrated by this diagram? Simple, my dear children, the carbon cycle, right? Carbon cycle. Next one. Name the processors indicated by the letters P and Q. Letters P and Q. Simple, my dear children. By just looking at the letter Q over here, you can see that the plant is going to emit carbon dioxide as atmospheric carbon dioxide. It's emitting carbon dioxide. And again, that Q letter is indicated in animals as well, which means this process should be respiration. Because through the respiration, plants and other organisms release carbon dioxide gas to the atmosphere. Then P should be what? P should be photosynthesis, right? P should be photosynthesis. That's the other process which the plant is going to use carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So we can write the two answers. Q is respiration, P is photosynthesis. So P photosynthesis. Then next one, Q. Q is respiration. Respiration. So P is photosynthesis and Q is respiration. Next one, name a substance indicated by the letter A. Letter A, a substance indicated by uh, uh, which we receive, substance that we receive from fossilization and uh, fossilization, right? Decomposition and fossilization, okay. Substance that we can receive, especially through fossilization. That means actually it, is, it has been represented like it's deposited like this, right? So it should be a fossil. That's why the factories are using to combust those things. So petroleum is a good answer. Crude oil, petroleum, coal, those are the ones. Those are the ones that we receive through the fossilization of carbon, right? So you can write. So you're asking, uh, you have been asked to write down only one substance. So you can indicate as coal, right? Coal. Petroleum and also fossil fuels then uh, natural gases, those things are also correct, okay? Right, so we have answered the part B questions. There is another one here, fourth one. What process indicated here occurs with the contribution of microorganisms? Very simple, my dear children. Microorganisms are the ones who is helping to decompose these substances, organic substances. So it's very simple, decomposition. Decomposition, right? Decomposition is the answer. Right, so my dear children, the next one. 
what is the environmental crisis caused by the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration exceeding the optimum level? Carbon dioxide level exceeding the optimum level. That means increase in my dear children. So, you know that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. When increasing the level of carbon dioxide gas, the solar radiation absorbed by the carbon dioxide will also get increased, which will help to increase the environmental temperature. So, our normal environmental temperature will keep get increased if you in, uh, if we can increase or if the atmospheric carbon dioxide level is going to increase. This process is simply referred as the global warming. So, the crisis, the environmental crisis which will rise when increasing carbon dioxide level in atmosphere is the global warming, my dear children, right? Or else increase in environmental temperature, right? So, we can write the answer global warming. Global warming. Next one. State an unfavorable effect brought about by that crisis. An unfavorable effect, right? So, when you take the global warming, my dear children, you know that because of the global warming, we discussed that the environment temperature is going to keep rise or keep increase. Because of increasing the temperature in our environment, you know that there are polar ice caps in our polar regions. So, if the environment temperature is keep getting increased gradually, these polar ice caps will melt down. They will start to melt down. Then because of that, large amount of water will get collected into seas and oceans. Because of that, my dear children, small islands will get submerged within the oceans and seas. Right? Other than that, so within grade 9, I think you could remember we have studied about El Nino effects. The changes in the environment temperature will result in change in the climatic and weather patterns. So that's going to be a huge problem all around our nations that means not in our nation but internationally it's going to be a heavy cry uh, heavy uh, problematic situations it's going to create heavy problematic uh, situations because my dear children when increasing the temp uh, when increasing the temperature and because of change in the climatic patterns some cities will definitely get flooded or else sometimes they will get uh, heavy uh, drought seasons right heavy means actually the drought will last for a long time period Sometimes, my dear children, like when you take uh, Middle East kind of countries, the average temperature will keep increase. Because of that, people will die because they won't be able to bear the extreme temperature. Then uh, when you take like polar regions, the countries somewhere related or closer to polar region, they, those countries will freeze to death actually. Because of in, uh, because when increasing the temperature in certain countries, the opposite process happens in the other countries, my dear children, right? When some 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 when some kind countries are getting heated, the others are freezing like that way. So this is the change in climatic patterns will do. These are the things that uh, that the uh, change in climate pat climatic patterns will do to our planet Earth, right? Uh, change in climatic patterns, actually, my dear children. It's going to stop the heat flow in our planet Earth, right? You know that our planet Earth, when you take our planet Earth, certain areas are somewhat colder, certain areas are somewhat, you know, high in temperature. So, because of that, the heat contained within high temperature areas should flow towards the low temperature areas. That's how the balance has been maintained in our biosphere. But however, change in, in climatic patterns definitely will do what? Definitely it will change this heat flow within our biosphere. So change in heat flow, my dear children, will result in these climatic changes, terrible climatic changes. Okay. So those are the things that might come out because of the global warming process. Actually, those things will definitely come out in the near future. Right, so unfavorable effect brought about by the crisis is melting of 
polar ice caps. Then other than that, my dear children, small islands will submerge in water, then uh, change in weather patterns and climatic patterns. Those things can also be taken for, uh, for the answers. Okay. Right. So we have answered all the questions related to the first question, my dear children. Okay. So now let's head on to see the second question. After completing first and second questions, we'll mark out Right, or I'll give you I'll give you the marking scheme according to the marking scheme. Uh, I'll write down the number uh, amount of marks that you will receive for the correct answers. Okay, so my plan is to do first and second questions within this part within this chapter, my dear children. After that, we'll go for the marking scheme. Okay, right. So let's head on to see the second question. So this is the structure of the second question, my dear children. So within the second question, you have been given a certain experiment over here. So by just looking at the experiment, you can clearly see that this is regarding the photosynthesis, right? How to prepare a certain plant leaf for starch test. So this is related with the photosynthesis, my dear children. Okay. Then here you can observe a structure of a cell and several questions has been asked. Then here you can observe a Punnett square. Then uh, you have to complete the square by using the details given in here. So this is the question. The second question, so you can uh, clearly observe that the second question is related with the biological parts in grade 10 and 11, my dear children. Okay, so this whole question is based with biology lesson part. So you know that when you take the second paper, part A in second paper, my dear children, you will be receiving four questions. So out of these four questions, one question will be biology related one. Theoretical parts related to the biology lesson lesson part that we have that we have studied in grade 10 and 11 Then uh, one question is coming from physics and the other is from chemistry. That's how the three questions Right uh, has been structured with There's another question like I said in the previous the first question which is coming from the environmental equilibrium related to the biosphere lesson part that's how the four questions have been created over here right now let's see how to answer the questions given in the second question then so the sketch given below indicate two steps of an experiment conducted to investigate whether starch is produced in plant leaves by photosynthesis so here like I said when I was starting the question the question is mainly relating to the photosynthesis process. So actually here you can clearly observe there is a certain step in here and there is a certain another step in here. You can clearly observe the first step over here. There is a water beaker, then there is a plant leaf, then we are going to heat the system. Then after that the second, uh, second step the same leaf has been uh, planted or same leaf has been uh, uh, has been uh, inserted into a alcohol container then we are boiling it again or we are providing it again to here uh, boil up the uh, leaf within the alcohol okay so you know that this thing is this is the process or these are the two steps that we carry out uh, during the process of testing uh, testing starch uh, testing for starch right when you take a plant leaf my dear children the first and foremost product which has been created within the plant leaf is glucose however when the photosynthesis is going to occur within the time period this glucose which has been created originally within the plant leaf is keep getting converted into starch so within the plant leaf my dear children because of the photosynthesis process this glucose is temporarily stored as starch so here we are going to do the experiment to test whether the starch can be found within the plant leaf or not. So this is that simple experiment. Okay. So while we are answering the questions, I'll explain how to do the experiment once more. Okay. Right. So write the reason for each of the following steps. Boiling the plant leaf in water in the step. Right. So when you take the step one, we need to boil the water or we need to boil the plant leaf in normal water first of all. So why do we need to boil water or boil the plant leaf in water? It, will, it would help 
right? It would help to break the cell walls within the plant uh, leaf. So breaking cell walls will definitely increase the permeability, right? Permeability of uh, cells, right? Permeability of the cells which means we can, you know, remove chlorophyll quite easily in that process if we increase the permeability. With, if there is chlorophyll, my dear children, we won't be able to observe any kind of an observation because with the chlorophyll, we won't be able to insert iodine solution correctly into the plant leaf. So our first and foremost idea is to remove chlorophyll and exposing cells to the outer environment. So in order to do that, we have to break the cell walls and increase the permeability in cells. Okay, so boiling in normal water would break up the cell walls and it would increase the permeability in cells. Okay, so we can write the answer to increase to increase the permeability To increase the permeability by breaking cell walls. To increase the permeability by breaking cell walls. Right? So this is the answer. Right. Now let's see the second question. Boil in the plant leaf in alcohol in step 2. Right. So step 2 boil in the plant leaf in alcohol so alcohol is an organic substance it is an organic substance because we know that alcohol we receive alcohol from plant and animal materials right so chlorophyll is also an organic substance so therefore my dear children chlorophyll is getting readily dissolved within alcohol because they have similar properties so we use alcohol in order to dissolve chlorophyll, right? So, boil in the plant leaf in alcohol in step 2. Why do we boil the plant leaf in alcohol in step 2? So, in order to remove chlorophyll or to dissolve chlorophyll, right? To remove chlorophyll. To remove chlorophyll. Next one, using a water bath in step 2. Why do we need to use a water bath in step 2 to boil the uh, leaf in alcohol? What is the purpose of having a water bath? Why can't we he uh, boil alcohol directly under a flame? It's because my dear children, when you take alcohol, alcohol is a highly combustible substance. So it is highly combustible, right? So as it is highly combustible, it's highly flammable. Because of that, explosions would occur. So in order to safeguard ourselves, what we are going to do, we're going to use a certain water bath and within the water bath, we are depositing the alcohol container so that we can heat up alcohol without any trouble, right? So we can write the answer. Alcohol is highly Alcohol is highly inflammable. Right? Alcohol is highly inflammable. Because of that, It will reduce or else we can uh, directly write down the answer like this. I'll mention it like this my dear children. Simple, quite simple. We can directly write the answer like this. 
because now as this is the structured paper without any trouble you can indicate it like this because alcohol is highly in inflammable that's quite good better and to the point we are writing the answer because alcohol is highly inflammable right because alcohol is highly inflammable that's the answer so we know that it's uh, because it is highly inflammable it is going to reduce the probability of getting an accident but we don't need to write down those things no we can directly write to the point we can write down the answer without any further deduce right so here we have write, uh, we have written down the answer like that so because alcohol is highly uh, inflammable we need to use a water bath within uh, when we are boiling alcohol okay right then the next one during step 2 what color change can be seen in alcohol in the boiling tube very simple my dear children if chlorophyll is getting dissolved within alcohol chlorophyll is in green color no so colorless alcohol will turn to green color okay so colorless alcohol will turn into green color you know that chlorophyll is in green color no so colorless alcohol will turn into green color right that means colorless will turn into green color right alcohol is usually colorless it will turn into green color if we dissolve what chlorophyll chlorophyll is in green color that's the reason right next question then part b given below is a sketch of an animal cell drawn based on the observations made under a light microscope so this is a simple diagram related to the light microscopic view of a cell so by just looking at the cell you can clearly observe it is an animal cell actually it is given in the question as well but however we can clear we can clearly say that this is an animal cell why is that because it doesn't have a cell wall right so we can clearly say that it is a what it, it is an animal cell okay so let's see the questions write in relevant boxes the names of the structures labeled p and r p that's the outer membrane of the cell my dear children which, which is referred to as the plasma membrane or the cell membrane plasma membrane so we'll manage the space and uh, we'll write down the answer within the box my dear children so plasma membrane plasma membrane next one r r is the intermediate surrounding between the nucleus of the cell and the plasma membrane so there's a certain jelly kind of a layer or structure within the cell my dear children that's the one which hold all the organelles with inside the cell this structure or this layer of jelly like substance is referred to as the cytoplasm cytoplasm okay cytoplasm cytoplasm so p is the outer structure the outer layer of the cell which is referred to as the plasma membrane then r is the surrounding between the nucleus and the plasma membrane so which is called to as the cytoplasm cytoplasm is the one which most important in holding or binding these cellular organelles within the plasma within the plasma membrane or the inside of the cell okay right so you know that qv is the nucleus my dear children it controls all the metabolic activities which is going to happen within the cell 
So P is plasma membrane and R is the cytoplasm, right? State the function of P. Function of P, P is the plasma membrane. So plasma membrane is the one which is going to control the entry and exit of materials in and out of the cell, okay? It's the main membrane, it's the semi-permeable membrane. So as it is a semi-permeable membrane, the main membrane which controls the entry and the exit of materials in and out of the cell. That's the main function of the plasma membrane. So function of P, plasma membrane, we can write controls controls the it controls the entry entry and exit of materials in and out of the cell. So controls the entry and exit of materials in and out of the cell. This is the function of plasma membrane. Next one. Name a type of animal cell which does not contain the organelle Q. Name a type of animal cell which does not contain the organelle Q. Q is the nucleus. So you have write down a cell which do not have a nucleus. So when we are studying about the blood cells, we have studied that there is a certain type of blood cell which doesn't have the nucleus. So why it doesn't have the nucleus? Because it will help to increase the surface area because you know that a, a nucleus when you take the nucleus nucleus is going to occupy a certain kind of an space you no know? the uh, largest amount of a space is being received by the nucleus because it's a brain of the cell so therefore my dear children if there is no nucleus large amount of surface area right so heavy amount of surface area can be observed within the cell so because of that blood or the oxygen will have the ability to bind quickly within the blood. So as I have mentioned the part oxygen, now you know what is the answer. Oxygen is getting bonded with red blood cells. So red blood cells is the answer. Red blood cells lack a nucleus to increase the surface area and to bind more oxygen, okay? So we can write down the answer, red blood cells. You can include as RBC if you want, right? Red blood cells. Don't mention as blood cells, my dear children, because there are several types of blood cells, right? Specially mention as red blood cells. It's very important, important to include red, the, part, the name called red. Don't just write as blood cells. Definitely include the term red, red blood cells, because red blood cell is the one which don't have a nucleus, okay? Right, then the next graph. What is the structure which is absent in an animal cell but is present in every plant cell? So, present in every plant cell, every, every, every means each and every one. Each and every one should have this one, okay? Each and every one. So, some of, you, uh, some of you guys may write chlorophyll, then vacuoles. But when we are studying about some plant cells, we have studied that. When we are studying about the living tissues lesson in grade 11, we have studied that there are some, right, there are some plant cells, my dear children. The vacuoles are not that much dominant. I mean, there are uh, some cells which have uh, vacuoles, large vacuoles, but however, there are some certain cells which do not have a large vacuole, right? That means vacuoles are not that much dominant in some uh, plant cells. Then next one, chlorophyll. Actually, we know that if you take a plant leaf like croton, 
or begonia those kinds of you know those kind of ones are referred to as mosaic plants so in mosaic plants there are certain areas colored areas some areas are like in green color some are like in red or yellow or whatever any mosaic areas right mosaic areas do not contain chlorophyll if it do not if it is not having chlorophyll then chloroplast is also absent in those areas so we can't write chloroplast and also what the previous one which i have explained the vacuole those things are somewhat limited to some some not for all but for some my dear children okay but for some cells but the question in here asking about every plant cell every plant cell but the cell wall is present in each and every plant cell so when you are answering the questions my dear children please be very careful in here because this everything every every word the word called every is they very very important okay it's very important because that everything is going to that every word is going to change your answer for sure so if you have written those chlorophyll or else chloroplast or else um, vacuole then your answer is going to be incorrect the most prop most appropriate answer would be the cell wall each and every plant cell carries a cell wall so answer should be cell wall my dear children okay cell wall is the answer right my dear children now let's head on to see the next one part c okay so this is related to by just looking at the picture you can see that this is a panel square so this is related to the inheritance lesson the 20th lesson in grade 10 my dear children right let's see the sex chromosomes contained in an egg mother cell and a sperm mother cell are indicated as xx and xy respectively you know that the sex chromosome right possessed by the human beings xx female sex cells xy male sex cells right those are the sex actually not the cells sex chromosomes right so male sex chromosome x and y female sex chromosomes x and x right accordingly fill in the boxes a b c d e and f in the panel square given below right so male and female gametes are given here so here x and again here there is a blank there is y over here downward then uh, there is a blank and over there over here also there are several blanks so now we need to identify who is the male and who is the female as this is y this is y no definitely we know that actually it is given in the question as well sperm cells when you take the sperm cells those are the male gametes so within the sperm cells there are six chromosomes of males x and y so here should be x then y if this is x this is female column so x x now we'll complete so x and x x x here x and here again x again x x x y x y x y x y this is the table quite simple it's like bracket simplification in mathematics the same thing okay right state a genetic disorder caused by sex linked inheritance sex linked inheritance you have to write down what you have to write down a genetical disorder so genetical disorder red green color blindness right Other than that, there is another one which is called as the hemophilia, right? So, hemophilia and red green color blindness, those are the two diseases related with the sex linked chromosomes, right? In human beings, so because of the mutation of the chromosomes or genes, there are two other diseases which are going to create within the human beings called as the albinism, right? 
albinism and the other thing is the thalassemia. So those things are created because of the gene mutations. This is not gene mutation. This is happening because of the sex chromosomes, sex linked inheritance diseases. Okay. So because of the lack of complementaries in Y chromosome, these diseases mainly occurs, right? So red green color blindness and the other thing is hemophilia those are the two sex linked inheritance diseases right my dear children so we have answered all the questions related to the first and second questions in your structured essay part now we'll mark out or we'll give out the marks for the correct responses or the correct answers right let's see how the marking procedure or the mar uh, or the procedure of giving marks is been uh, uh, is been conducted within the uh, paper my dear children okay so let's head on to the first slide once more and we'll give out the marks according to it okay right my dear children now i have with me the marking scheme right so according to the marking scheme now i'm going to give you the marks for the correct responses so let's see so for the completion of this table one mark each my dear children right for the correct responses 2013 wind call and 30 percent one each that means you'll be receiving four marks four marks the next one so for writing down the relationship you have given with two marks two marks next one for writing down the answer as sun or else solar energy both the things are correct okay so you have given with one mark then writing down the different kind of energy source which has been used right by the developed countries you'll be given with one mark again then the carbon cycle question so here for writing down the carbon cycle you have given with one mark so for writing down photosynthesis and respiration you have given with one each that means two marks here one again here one so altogether there are two marks for that question then for writing down a substance which is received by the fossilization process you have given with one mark then for writing down the answer decomposition my dear children one mark then for writing down the process which is going to happen because of the increasing carbon dioxide global warming one mark then environmental crisis that would occur because of the global warming melting of polar ice caps therefore that answer again one mark right so this is this is how the marks have been provided for the correct answers in question one now let's head on to see the second question my dear children right so second question right my dear children now let's see what is the procedure of giving marks for the question number two so in the question number two my dear children for writing down these three correct answers one mark each so here one here also one mark and here also one mark right for writing down the three reasons in the three steps okay then next one For writing down the correct answer for the change in color, you will be getting one mark. Next one. For the two answers given in here, one mark each. Then for writing down the function of P, for the function of P, you have given with one mark then for writing down the red blood cells again one mark then for the cell wall one mark 
then in he, each of the answers he has specially given if a and b are correct give one mark if for a and b one mark that means half each okay then after that if all c d e f are correct give four marks if all of these things are correct give four marks that means one each so altogether for this table you will be receiving five marks my dear children for the table the next one for writing down the color blindness one mark so out of 15 this is the way of giving the marks okay right then so we have answered first and second questions my dear children within the structured essay questions part so in our next chapter we'll answer the next two questions question number three and question number four okay right then so i hope that you got a good knowledge about answering the questions correctly for the paper to write the structured essay part so in our next chapter i'll meet you with the next two questions then to watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.